Now we're going to take a look at what's called a limiting reactant problem. And during this type of problem, what we want to do is for a given reaction, determine what is the limiting reactant, and then determine the theoretical yield for a reaction. And so theoretical yield just means how much of the product we can make. So there are defined steps that we can use for determining the limiting reactant. The first thing we need is our reaction, and we need to make sure that it is balanced. And then we need to find the number of moles of each reactant. So remember, when we have a reaction, the units that are implied inside of this reaction are either atoms or moles. So we must convert whatever information we are given about our reaction to moles in order to use our reaction to get mole conversion units. And then we use these mole ratios to convert moles of reactant to moles of product. And so we do this type of calculation for each individual reactant. So there will be multiple calculations. We then compare and say which reactant produces the smallest number of moles of product. The one that does that is going to be the limiting reactant. And the number of moles that are made are going to determine our theoretical yield. The theoretical yield is in grams, so not in moles. So even though we've determined how many moles a product are make, we have to do this last step where we need to convert the moles of the product that are made to grams of product. So we take the number of moles of product that can be made if we use up the limiting reactant, and then we multiply that number times the molecular weight of the product. And this is going to produce a number in grams, and that's going to be our theoretical yield. This is going to be the maximum amount of product which can be made. So you have to remember that your answer can't be in moles, it's going to be in grams, because when we actually do this reaction, the weight that we're going to get out in terms of product is going to be in grams, and we want to be able to compare those two. So here we have an example. I've given you a basic reaction that involves gallium and sulfur, and the mole ratio says for every two moles of gallium that I use up, use up three moles of sulfur, and I make one mole of gallium sulfide. I then tell you how much of each of my reactants I have. So I have 50 grams of gallium and 50 grams of sulfur. And we want to find of these two, gallium and sulfur, which is the limiting reactant. And then what is the theoretical yield? And remember, this is in grams. And then in the last step, what we like to do is to compare our actual theoretical yield to an actual yield produced. So if you run a reaction, one of the things that we like to do is compare the amount of product that you actually get to the theoretical yield, and this is going to give us what's called a percent yield. It tells us how close did our reaction actually get to the theoretical yield or the maximum amount of product that we can make. And it's this theoretical yield helps determine the effectiveness of a reaction. So this will be one additional step. So we're going to apply the steps for determining a limiting reactant. So in the first step, you make sure that your reaction is balanced. So make sure you have a reaction, you make sure that they're balanced. I've looked here, this is a balanced reaction. And then I need to find how many moles of reactant. Here we were given grams of each reactant and we want moles. So to go from grams to moles, you divide by molecular weight. So here I've taken 50 grams of gallium, divided by the molecular weight of gallium. That tells me how many moles of gallium I've started with. The same thing with sulfur. I take 40 grams of sulfur, I divide by the molecular weight of sulfur, it tells me how many moles of sulfur I am starting with. So this is just one way. We will find out there is other ways of determining moles of reactants later on. But remember in this step, no matter what information I give you about the reactants, you need to find the number of moles of reactants. So now that we know how many moles of reactants we have, we use mole ratios gained from the reaction to convert our moles of reactant to moles of product. And so we do this for each reactant. So we say, if all the gallium is used up, how much gallium sulfide will be used? I know from here that I start with 0.717 moles of gallium. My reaction says that for every two moles of gallium, I make one mole of gallium sulfide. I use this mole conversion. So remember, we're converting the moles of our reactant to moles of product. We use the reaction to come up with the mole ratio is like a conversion. It allows us to convert the unit of mole of reactant to the unit of mole of our product. And then the stoichiometry comes down and affects our calculation. So here, two moles of gallium make one mole of gallium sulfide. I put it in this form. Moles of gallium cancel. My answer is going to be moles of gallium sulfide. And then the 2 is here, so we take 0.717 and divide by 2. 
to say that if I use up all of my gallium, I will make 0.359 moles of gallium sulfide. I then do the same thing for sulfur. And so you are going to need to do this step. There can be more than two reactants. For each reactant, you do this kind of step. I know here that we calculated that we have 1.25 moles of sulfur to start with. And then we say if we use up all the sulfur, how many moles of product, gallium sulfide, will be made? I look at my reaction and I find that there is a 3 to 1 mole ratio. It says for every 3 moles of sulfur that I use up, I make 1 mole of gallium sulfide. And I use that as a conversion. As always in these limiting reactant problems during this part of the calculation, the moles of the reactant are going to be in the bottom of this conversion. So I do the calculation. Moles of sulfur cancel. I'm left with mole of gallium sulfide. The stoichiometric 3 remains, so I take 1.25 mole of sulfur and I divide by 3. And then this tells us that if I use up all the sulfur, I make 0.417 moles of gallium sulfide. You then compare the two and say, of both of my calculations, which one of my reactants make the smallest amount of product? So between 0.359 and 0.417, 0.359 is the smaller number. And so this tells me that gallium is the limiting reactant and the amount of product that we make is 0.359 mole. So we've determined the limiting reactant. Now we want to find the theoretical yield. So we know how much product we're making. Now we apply the fact that mole times molecular weight gives grams. We know that this reaction makes 0.359 moles of gallium sulfide. I then multiply by the molecular weight of gallium sulfide and this tells me that during this reaction, the maximum amount of product that I can make is 84.6 grams of gallium sulfide. So this is our theoretical yield. This says that if my reaction works perfectly, if I use up all of my limiting reactant and all of that limiting reactant is converted to my product, this is the maximum amount of gallium sulfide that I can make. So in reality, we run the reaction and we get a certain amount of gallium sulfide out. So this is theoretical. That's why it's called a theoretical yield. In theory, this is the maximum amount I can make. In reality, when you run the reaction, you will most likely not make this much of gallium sulfide. You'll make something less. But we want to come up with a number that tells us how closely did our actual reaction come to the theoretical yield. So theoretical yield is the maximum yield that can be based off the masses of the reactants and the reaction stoichiometry actual yield is what you get from the reaction. In order to get an actual yield, I have to literally go into the lab, run the reaction, isolate the product, and weigh it. So when we say actual yield, it means that it is literally done. And what we want to do now is calculate a percentage yield, which says how closely did my actual yield get to my theoretical yield. And so the percent yield is just the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. This says basically percentage-wise how close did my actual yield get to my theoretical yield. And once again, this is a measure of the effectiveness of a reaction. So if you get upward of 80 or 90 percent of your theoretical yield, that's generally considered a very good reaction. Also notice percent yield should never be greater than 100 percent. If you do get a number that is greater than 100 percent, something's wrong. Either you've made a mistake in the calculation or there is some kind of impurity inside of your product. So our percent yield should never be greater than 100%. So for this reaction, we have calculated our theoretical yield. So I've given you an actual yield of 80.0 grams of gallium sulfide. I then want to find the theoretical yield. I then take the actual yield and divide by the theoretical yield and multiply by 100 to get a percent yield. And so in this case, our percent yield is 94.6%. And this tells us that our actual yield was 94.6% of the theoretical yield.